Let's talk about one of the most popular monetization strategies behind malware out there right now. Um, now, there's a reason why this is one of the most popular monetization strategies, and that is dropping miner software, M-I-N-E-R, not the Drake type of miner, the other type of miner. Um, there's a reason why that's one of the most popular ways to monetize malware. It's because it's probably one of the least controversial ways and one of the ways that people don't really care about as much. Um, so let's back up. What is miner type malware? I'm going to call it mining malware because it keeps sounding a little bit like Diddy. Um, mining malware is malware that drops a cryptocurrency miner onto the victim PC. Essentially what this does is it monetizes your access to the victim in such a way that the really the only impact that it has on the victim system is taking up victim resources. So you're going to spin up the GPU, you're going to slow down the operating system. But in general, if you're targeting, like for example, home PCs, grandma's not really going to notice that Gmail is running a little bit slower and that her Mahjong tiles game isn't running as fast as it normally does. Now, if you drop these on enterprise PCs, a lot of times there's monitoring software that's going to notice that your GPU is spun up or that you know, you're using more resources than you otherwise would. This isn't to say that it's victimless, but it is to say that it is at least a little bit less controversial and it is less frequently really cared about than something like, okay, I'm going to ransom your PC. That people are going to notice and people are going to care about. Um, if you exfiltrate a lot of really sensitive data and you know sell it on the dark web or what have you, people are going to notice that and they're going to care about that. If you drop a piece of software on their PC that spins up their GPU a bit more than it normally would, and it uses that to print invisible fake money for the other person, eh, you know, it's less cared about and it's less frequently monitored. Now, that's not to say that it's not frequently monitored, and that's not to say that, you know, XM Rig, which is the one that we're going to be using, isn't frequently caught, because it's fairly easy to say, well, you know, we run an insurance company, there shouldn't be any cryptocurrency miners on our network. So we're just going to blast those to oblivion. Anytime we see a cryptocurrency miner, miner we're going to just blast it. Um, so they are caught pretty frequently. It's pretty easy to write detections for them, etc. cetera. Um, but let's, let's dive into the code. So the code is actually fairly simple and I wasn't going to make this video or cover cryptocurrency mining malware until I realized that I wanted to make a dropper and that all a cryptocurrency mining malware is, is just a dropper that drops a piece of mining software. Um, so all I really had to do was add an extra endpoint that would serve up XMRig for Windows and would serve up the config file. The way that XMRig essentially works, or the way that it can work, is you typically have the executable, which is XMRig, which is technically a legitimate piece of software. So you could also just fetch this from, you know, the downloads endpoint on the internet, but that's going to be blasted really, really quickly. So typically you'll see people hosting their own version of XMRig. Um, so you'll have XMRig, which is a cryptocurrency miner for XMR or Monero, um, which is one of the more popular um, types of cryptocurrency that's used by you know mining malware specifically because I think it's a little bit more secure, a little bit more private. I don't know that much about cryptocurrency, but at least that's my understanding of it. And it will then pull down a config.json. So you see the two calls right here in the code. You've got slash download slash finance, which is the endpoint that I'm using to host XMRig. And then you've got slash download slash finance underscore conf, which is the config file that XMRig uses to pull out, for example, your wallet address. Um, just for fun, I'm going to leave my wallet address in the description. And if you are a Monero hard user, send me some Monero. I don't imagine that's going to happen much. But this, um, this function here is fairly simple. Um, all it does is it grabs XMRig here, makes sure that that you know, actually went through. Um, and then it will make sure that the miner is actually hosted there. And if it is hosted there, then it will write that out to finance.exe. That's just kind of like a fun little way to, you know, obfuscate what XMRig actually is. Um, and then it will pull down the config file the exact same way, write that out to the exact same directory, and it will start the miner. And the function to start the miner is start miner. Um, very, very simple. We actually don't need this here. I'll 
erase that. And hard minor. Don't need C2. Um, and it will spawn finance.exe. Finance.exe or xmrig is by default going to look in the same director directory for a file named config.json. There are other ways that you can start the miner, but this is basically baby's first miner. This is like the easiest possible way to do this. And if I had antivirus turned on, this would get caught immediately because it's dropping xmrig to disk. That's just as sus as it could possibly get. Um, and it is going to spawn that as a new process. Now, there, if, if you're a malware developer, you're going to note that there is immediately a problem here. This is going to spawn a process that is a child to the currently running process. What I am going to end up doing is I'm going to create a VB script that it's going to write to disk that does all of this instead so that when it all runs, it's running as a detached process and my malware can continue running. Uh, what this will basically do is once this process is spawned, now this process is a child process of mine and if the malware ever shuts off, then the process shuts off as well. Or if I shut down this process, it's going to continue running the malware, but it's going to be a little bit weird. There's a lot of debugging that's required here. But what I'm going to end up doing is basically creating a VB script file that pulls all of this down, runs at runtime, all of that fun stuff. What this also doesn't do is it does not check if XMREG is already in the current directory or has already been running. So obviously that's a problem. Using mutexes and stuff like that would fix that. But again, this is baby's first malware. And as kind of a note, there have been a couple of folks that have um, commented, you know, a lot of folks have really liked all of his stuff, but there have been a couple of folks who have commented saying, oh, I could bid it and build better malware in five minutes in CC++, or like this is going to get caught by every antivirus out there. Yes, A, I'm fairly new to malware development. That's not really an excuse. I'm kind of learning here. But B, the goal here is not to teach you like, the super advanced methods that malware is going to use to stay hidden or to install itself or whatever that's coming eventually once i kind of learn it myself but from my experience as a an information security researcher easy stuff like this happens all the time like malware exactly like this gets installed on disk and runs all the time i've reversed this stuff people do legitimately still get away with dropping XM right to disk and just running it raw. That stuff still works. So whenever you say, oh, well, this is easy, like this is the simplest possible malware, blah, blah, blah. Yes, but people are still losing <laughs> to this type of malware. So it's it's just kind of like, a, yeah, I could spend the next six months just deep diving into you know malware development and become a super god at malware development and then release content on that. But one, I would kind of worry about what ends up coming of that. And two, that stuff will also work, but it's it's kind of ignoring the vast majority of malware that's super simple, super ugly, and still works. Like, we're still having people get pwned by this stuff. Um, anyways, that's kind of an aside. Um, we can pop open the actual, um, sorry, the actual C2 here, and we can see function main. The two added endpoints I've got are download slash finance and download slash finance underscore conf. And those are mapped to get minor and get config. So let's go to function, get minor. This one's very, very simple. It's basically exactly the same as the update endpoint. Um, in fact, it's it copy and pasted from that. That's why this is wrong. Malware, we're going to do download uh, xmrig. All right, and all it's going to do is read xmrig from this directory and serve it as a binary response here. And then that binary response is then written out to disk on the endpoint. And then git config does the exact same thing except it's application slash JSON instead of um, the normal. So let's pop open our VNC endpoint. So if we pop over to our victim PC, this is just a VNC connection over to a Windows box. We are going to delete the old version, rustmal.exe. We are going to curl our C2, 168.1.64 on port 3000. Don't trust anything that, any process that occurs as a result from curl to 
something at port 3000, probably not good. Update, we're going to output to rustmal.exe, and then we are going to run rustmal.exe. So we run this, it's going to pull everything down fairly quickly. Well, not as quickly as I'd like, and then it's gonna start running stuff. Got the username, and then as you can see, XMRig is running. Um, so fairly basic stuff again. And as you can see, everything's kind of happening concurrently. So we've got our malware still running and we also have XM rig running in the same process. If we press control C here, we're going to exit out of XM rig, but our process, our malware process is going to hang. So I can go ahead and show you that if we pop over to, let's open up our, uh, let's see, it's going to be tough to open this. Um, so if we pop open this, we see that we're getting all of our requests to our malware endpoint, and XMRig is also running. Let me do this real quick. If we were to create a couple of spaces here and then pop this back open and exit it, we can see that XMRig says that we have stopped. We are continuing to run our malware, and then if we press Control-C again, nothing actually happens. We're not able to stop our malware process from running. I believe that at some point there's a process hang issue going on there within the command.exe. Um, I don't know exactly how to fix that, but it should be fixed by me basically pulling out a, you know, the actual XM rig running part into a VB script instead of running it within the same process using spawn. Um, and that should fix everything anyway. So I'm not really worried about debugging that problem. You know, all of this is being run through command.exe instead of running the executable like normal. So, you know, that's that's all fine. I'm not worried about debugging that. That is about it um, for a very simple dropper or a very simple mining type malware. Um, the next episode will probably be on creating a rat or making a rat functionality within the malware. Um, so that, that'll probably be the next one that I put up um, on the malware development series. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Take it easy. Peace.